person I would like to introduce, Dr. Richard Young. Richard is the new incumbent for the Murney D. Medicine Professorship in Counseling Psychology. Uh, well, uh, like my colleagues, I'm absolutely delighted to be here. I'm delighted to have been, uh, to have received this uh, professorship. And I'd like to thank, at the outset, the donor and the Faculty of Education, of course, for, for uh, uh, awarding it to me. This professorship is named in honor of Murney Nevison. Murney Nevison was uh, head of the counseling psychology department uh, when it was a department in the, in the 70s and early 80s, and I had a chance to overlap with her in the first uh, few years that I was here. Uh, it's very appropriate that the, 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 the mandate of the professorship and Murney's own vision uh, co uh, coalesce. And three things that stood out for me in what she said about counseling and about the things that were important were prevention, social context, and uh, counseling itself. And, uh, and that's in the, in, the, in the document, in the mandate for the professorship. And I hope that is what I've taken from her work and from the mandate of the, of the professorship to, to carry forward uh, with my vision for for holding this professorship. M much of my vision is actually encapsulated or summarized in this book that uh, uh, colleagues and I published at the early part of 2015, Counseling and Action. And it represents a, a conceptual, a methodological, and an applied focus in a perspective that we're taking on how people behave, how people act, and how to intervene in those actions. Uh, it's based on not behavior, but action, meaning in a sense that our most of human behavior is intentional, that we have something in mind when we're engaged in, in what we're doing. So we, we consider human action as important. And we look from a research perspective not at explanations from the past, but explanations in terms of the goals that, action, that actions have. And moreover, as we've as I've indicated on this slide, meaningful actions in our lives, and just think of, of yourself and think of your own life, meaningful actions in our lives are frequently joint actions, that is, actions with other people. We all agree, more or less. And when you construct, when you think of those actions together, this connected with this, connected with this, it becomes what we're calling a project. And we do have life projects, and we have short-term projects and longer-term projects in our lives. And if we think we want to intervene or change or help young people who are, who are, who are identified as being at risk or um, uh, socially isolated, let's think of dealing with their actions that they're engaged in or helping them create their actions. So we've been engaged in this for 20 odd years or, or more. Um, and we've been able to describe the actions the joint actions, if you will, and the joint projects of parents and adolescents in various contexts, of parents themselves as they engage with their, with their children, of clients and counselors, of friends, peers, and of romantic partners. Most of our work is with uh, adolescents and young people. And we have, uh, we're, the current project for example, we're dealing with families whose adolescent Ch uh, an adolescent child or a young adult child in that family is making the transition, who, who has an intellectual disability, and is making the transition to adulthood, is leaving high school. So how is that joint action within that family constructed and engaged in? That's the question. But we've done other studies where we've looked at recovery from eating disorders, adolescent eating disorders, as a family project, or recovery from depression, as a family project, or how young women construct body image in the family, often with their mothers. These are all joint actions that have, uh, from my perspective, an important uh, 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 
preventive as well as remedial, but an pre important preventive dimension. So, um, from the counseling perspective, what we've been able to do in this research is to, this is a complex slide, I don't expect you to read it all, but it gives you some idea. We've identified at various levels and in various systems the characteristics that you need or that we think you need, I should say that, we think you need, <laughs> for engaging in what we call meaningful actions, motivated projects, and in a sense a life enhancing career. And I'm not using career in the occupational sense, but these things that we engage in in life, uh, for example, uh, uh, parenting can be a long term career. And what we've done is we have, in a sense, provided uh, I don't want to say a diagnostic way, but a, an approach for counselors to look at each one of these 29 factors. And I don't want to think the factors are, are, are um, exhaustive or definitive. They're, they're what we consider at this moment. But we're, we've uh, identified the ways counselors can assess the extent to which a client might be in their actions, in their projects, uh, able to do something that's life enhancing rather than life defeating and life destroying. So we've, we've got, a, we've got a, a, a framework, we've got a, a, a model if you will, conceptually, research perspective and from a practice perspective. So um, what I'm seeing then as the specific vision for, the, for, the, for this, for this uh, professorship is to facilitate motivated human action. And the particular concern that we have is youth. And the particular concern of the, of the uh, professorship is youth who might be uh, at risk or, or uh, socially isolated or marginalized. And here are the components of this. And we can't, I can't do this alone and I can't do it with just uh, although this, this professorship is generous and I'm very grateful for getting it, we can't, it's not enough to do, to do everything I've got up here, that's for sure. But we have other funding and we have other colleagues. I've been working quite extensively, for example, with Sheila Marshall in the School of Social Work. We want to continue to describe joint actions and projects because it's only in their description that we get to understand what it, what it is that people are actually doing. What are the goals? What are the steps? Well, that's the previous slide. What are the resources and the skills that they need to engage in certain kinds of actions? And where might be the, the challenges they're facing? We also want to develop interventions. And we have a model of intervening that's been, that's been that we're, we've practiced in our research, in a sense, we've tested in a sense in our research that we think is quite useful in terms of uh, intervening with, with, with people. And it really, the, the, that intervention uh, model is really assessing and understanding the, the assessing and understanding the goals that people are engaged in, and then using that in a sense that chart, that previous chart, as a diagnostic framework to where is the difficulty, and then focusing on the the the, the difficulty. And we would like to be able to assess these interventions. Now, assessing interventions in a in a in a uh, in a uh, efficacy oriented way and in, in an effective way is a big undertaking but we want to begin that that challenge and uh, finally uh, I see uh, part of my vision for this is noble noble uh, knowledge mobilization for counseling practice we have some material that can be used there are counselors in the field uh, right now that are using this that are trying to use it that are working with me in terms of saying how can we how can we do this better um, and, of course, I really depend on and will depend on uh, other colleagues, students who are taking this up, and, of course, other funded research for which I'm in, uh, grateful. I'm not sure if that's 10 minutes or whatever, but, but thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Richard. Questions for Richard? Yeah. One of the things yep. I've noticed is that 
Uh, Dr. Young also has been working closely with international colleagues, both in the development of this model and the people who are beginning to take this up. I think you were recently recognized as being the most cited author in counseling psychology in the area of vocational work, so he's doing a wonderful job disseminating this already. So thanks again. Thank you. Thank you.